Well, good morning. Welcome to the Church at Avenue South. I hope you're doing well today, whether you're in the room or joining us online. Thank you so much for being with us. We're going to stand together and worship. So let's raise a hallelujah. Well, I'll raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise, I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. And I raise a hallelujah. Sing, let's sing it out. Yes. 
have a quick seat. Thank you. Well, let me welcome you again to the church at Avenue South. Boy, uh, many years ago, my... Uh, my mother uh, worked in banking most all of her career. And yet, oddly enough, it was my father uh, who taught me uh, two of the proper uses of money, providing for your family and saving for the future. And yet, my mom was one who read the Bible every day. She loved it. And she said, Bill, you know, there are actually three proper uses of money. And she's the one who taught me the third, maybe the most important one, because she said this Use of money is the way that you can find peace, you can find contentment, you really find the most joy in life, and that's giving. And she taught me to take part of my allowance every week to give it to the church, uh, give it away. And so when I think of giving, I'm often reminded of that, that there really are proper things. We have to take care of our families, we have to save for the future, but really through giving, we get to see that joy, uh, that love when we give something away, how it affects and changes not only ourselves, but the world around us. And so there's many ways to give. I always tell people, give to causes that you feel passionate about, that you feel you're doing something to make a difference to organizations you trust. And hopefully the church at Avenue South is one of those. I think we're extremely financially responsible uh, uh, all year through, but especially in these days uh, of COVID, we're being very conservative how we spend our money and what we do with it. And so think about us when you give. Uh, there's different ways to do it. Obviously, we don't pass uh, plates like we used to. Uh, there are some boxes at the door you can use. You can go online uh, to our website, or you can simply text uh, the word give to 623623. Lord, we're grateful that we get to experience the joys in life and how you take care of us. All that we have truly comes from you. And yet, when we give away uh, our time, our, our talents, certainly our treasure, our money, you do something inside of us. You build a joy that only comes from helping others. And so I pray that as we give, we give to a church uh, that makes a difference, not only in this community, but around the world. So help us to do that with joy and gladness, even today. Christ's name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Bill. Hey, let's stand again. Let's worship.
Your grace changes everything By the cross I am free Your grace changes everything I was blind but now I see But your grace changes everything
arms wide open. Let's sing it out. Pouring out, pouring out my life, gracefully broken. Here I am. Here I am. Good morning, Church at Avenue South. If I haven't had a chance to meet you yet, my name is Alex Rose, and I'm the preschool and children's minister here. I miss all my friends. As preschool and children's minister, I get to have lots of friends who are grown-ups and lots of friends who are kids little baby friends and fifth grade year old friends and everyone in between. And I miss all of them. Um, and this morning I wanna to talk to you guys about what the heart of that is. So for my friends at home and for my friends here in the room, do you know what the church is? Like what's the church? Maybe you think it's the building that I'm currently in. Maybe you think it's the event, like what we're doing right now all worshiping together, maybe this is church. Let me read to you what the Bible says. Remember, the Bible is true. It's God's word, um, and so we can trust everything in it. So this is from um, Acts 2, verses 46 and 47, and it says, And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. So the church is the people, people who worship together. They attend the temple together. They worship together. Um, they eat food together. They received their food with glad and generous hearts. They spend their lives together. So they do things like play together, um, go places together, maybe just right now talk on the phone together from their separate homes. They do life together. And they teach other people about Jesus. So there's three parts of that, right? We love Jesus and we worship him. We spend time with each other and we tell other people about Jesus so we can add more people to our friend group. And this is why the church hasn't stopped during quarantine. Um, we've been at home and for a while the church building was closed, but church in general hasn't stopped. And what a gift that the Lord laid out for us exactly what the church is and what it's supposed to be before we were all physically separated from each other for a while so that we can still be the church and remember what that is. This morning, I wanna to talk to you guys about Jesus on the go. So this week, Jesus on the go with, was with Ellis Joy Bryant. And you might know her dad, um, Aaron Bryant. This is what she had to say about having Jesus on the go this week. She said, it's been hard staying home while doing school, especially while my dad has been sick. But when I look at this Jesus on the go, I remember that he is with me, even when I'm scared that my dad is sick. This was a big week for Ellis Joy. Not only did she have Ellis, or did she have Jesus on the go with her, but her dad was home, sick. He's all better. He's here with us today. Um, but she also celebrated her ninth birthday. So she had a really exciting and crazy week that probably looked a little bit different than she expected. But here's the good part. Ellis Joy is already part of our church. She worships Jesus. She lives her life with many of you, with me, and she wants other people to know Jesus. So this week, even though she was scared, and even though it looked a little bit different than she thought it should, she trusted in Jesus, and you guys can too. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, um, we thank you for letting us know what we need on this earth to love you better, to love people around us better, and to share others who you are. We praise you for giving us your word um, and helping us to know your character and trust you even when times are hard and scary. We love you, God. 
It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, Alex, thank you for leading us through our family engagement moment. We have a lot of children that are watching online with their families and sometimes in this room, and so we're grateful for that. And Alex mentioned that my daughter, who had Jesus on the go, was scared because I was sick. In the middle of September, somehow, some way, we wash our hands, we wear our mask, we abide by social distancing protocol. But somehow I got sick with COVID. And for about five days, it, it was uncomfortable, it was unpleasant, and obviously you have to quarantine for up to 14 days. And so that's the first time in as long as I can remember where Amy and the kiddos did not get to see me for nearly two weeks. So on Ellis Joy's birthday, I didn't get to see her, didn't get to hug her, didn't get to do any of that. Uh, I was better and well, uh, but I still had to quarantine and still had to do what was in the best interest of those around me. And so um, I will tell you how grateful I am for your prayer support and for those of you who wrote notes of encouragement and mailed them here or sent them to the house. I'm just very grateful for that, very humbled by that. Matthew and Hunter did a phenomenal job per usual with their preaching and their communication. We're, we're blessed with gifted communicators. And so obviously everything that happened on the platform and behind the scenes, ministry and mission continued because of this awesome staff. And so just very grateful for that. And I will tell you, you know, when you get married and you, you say for better or for worse, you don't ever want to be a burden to your family or to your spouse. And Amy held it all together for about 14 days. She held it all together, couldn't help her with laundry, couldn't help her with cooking, couldn't help her with cleaning, couldn't help her with the schoolwork for the kids. I'm just tremendously blessed that the Lord saw fit to put us together in life to serve and love one another. And so I've, I've been reminded of God's faithfulness to me in so many ways. And I also want to tell you that as we continue to go through an unusual year, I know that is an overused word, but should you know someone who's sick or should you get sick or get the sniffles or get concerned or overwhelmed, Psalm 56.3 says, when I'm afraid, I will trust in you. When I'm afraid, I will trust in you. And I'm telling you, God is still good and he's still faithful, even though it's a beautiful but a broken world. And Jesus will redeem and restore all that is not right. And so we pray for that. That's our hope. That's what gets us excited, not only on Sunday mornings, but every day of the week. And one of the reasons that this morning or this first Sunday in October is so important for us to gather online and together in the room is that this is Vision Sunday. This is Vision Sunday for 2021. Listen, we're going to blink, and it's going to be January 1, and we're going to be turning the calendar into a new year. And I know many of us are like, I cannot wait for 2021. Just get away from the phrase, the term, the numbers, 2020. Well, one of the things that's still happening, I mentioned, is ministry and mission. And so we want to look ahead to the next year and what God's calling us to do as a church family. You may be aware that we are one campus of a much larger church family in Middle Tennessee. We are part of Brentwood Baptist Church. And the first campus that started in Brentwood about 12 years ago said, why would we keep asking people to drive into the church from all over Middle Tennessee? Let's dust for God's fingerprints. Let's find where he's active in communities in the city and in the suburbs. And, and let's plant campuses there where we can reach our neighbors and nations. So we're one campus as part of a much larger church family. And so this morning is Vision Sunday, so it's going to be a little bit different in terms of what you're going to experience and what you're going to see. Our senior pastor, Mike Glenn, will be communicating to us this morning for just a few minutes on the screens, and then I will share with us a little bit about how the vision for our church will filter its way into what we're doing here. But I'm excited about what God's up to. I'm excited about what God's up to. I'm excited about the part that he's brought you to this church family to play in the mission of restoring and redeeming all that he's up to in our world. So let me do this. Before I ask us to stand and sing, before we, before we see this vision sermon and consider what it has as an impact for us, let me, let me offer a word of prayer. If you just bow your head and close your eyes, if that helps you eliminate any distractions, we're going to sing a song of worship. We're going to be reminded through the lyrics that you're about to see on the screen that God is good and he's faithful to his people. And some of us need to be reminded of that this morning. I know I need to be reminded of that. So in this moment, Lord Jesus, we come to you and we tell you how grateful we are that you are our God. We're grateful that you take care of us when we're not feeling well. We're grateful that when things are really good and our lives are flourishing, you, you remind us that all good gifts have come from your hand. Lord, I pray for my brothers and my sisters, the children, the women, the men who are in this room or watching online that are part of our church family. Would you quicken our hearts from the scripture this morning? Would you arrest our attention 
to know what you're up to and how we can join you in the work you're doing in the city that we care so much about and in Middle Tennessee. In whatever way, the men and women that are part of our church need to hear and be comforted, challenged, encouraged. We pray that your Holy Spirit would do that this morning. And we're so grateful to be part of a church family because we're better together than we are as individuals. And we're reminded of that in this moment. And as we sing, we give you our praise. So fill our hearts with your joy and glorify yourself. And we pray this in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. So would you stand with me in the worship team as we sing a song of worship together before we hear our vision sermon.
Jesus who gives us life, who gives us a reason to live, and God who gives us hope. Lord, I pray that you'll be with us as now as we hear from Mike Glenn from the Brentwood campus, and as we hear from Aaron afterwards. It's in your name I pray. Amen. Thanks, guys. You can have a seat. Welcome. It is the first Sunday in October, and we are grateful to have the opportunity to talk about vision. Wow. It is a, well, a little weird, to be honest with you. 2020 has been one of those years that we can't wait to get through. Honestly, I think if I stood up today and said, hey, the vision is to get through 2020, that most of you would stand and applaud. Part of me just wants to put up a Christmas tree, call it Christmas, and call it a year. It has been one of those years. And so now we're having to do everything a little different. The online congregations, the, uh, the Zoom meetings, all of that. And I know it's driving you crazy and it's driving me crazy, but we're still having to deal with the realities of the pandemic. More than anything, we want to keep you safe and we want to keep our church on mission. Wow. With everything that's changed, the one thing that hasn't changed is our mission. Now, one of the great things about growing up in the South is you have appropriate phrases for just about every situation. You know, if you lose something, then it's a lost ball in high cotton. If you're going somewhere, it's you're fixing to get ready. And right now, in one of those times where everything around you is changing so fast, but you have to hold on to what matters, the phrase, hunker down. Hunker down, it means to dig in, hold your ground, take whatever life is throwing at you. Maybe you don't win, just don't lose. Hunker down, hang in there until you can fight another day. Some days, the biggest victory is that you just don't leave the field. 2020 has been one of those years. Maybe we didn't accomplish as much as we wanted to. But maybe we didn't lose as much ground as we feared. That was kind of the way it was in the early church. The early church would have these explosions of growth, and then they would withdraw to small groups. They would have another explosion of growth, and then they would uh, come back again to another small group. That's what we find at the end of Acts chapter 5. This isn't the only time in Acts that we hear this phrase or one similar to it. Chapter 5, verse 42. Every day, every day in the temple, in various homes, they continue the teaching and proclaiming the good news that Jesus is the Messiah. Every day in the temple, public worship, and in various homes, private study, small group study, they continue teaching and proclaiming that Jesus Christ was the Messiah. This is God's word for God's people. Hear it, believe it, and live. Let's pray together. In a year when we have heard all the things that we cannot do, help us focus on what we can do and help us be obedient to those moments, big or small, that you open for us to follow you into your future. And we pray this in your name. Amen. Book of Acts is full of action. It is hard to keep up with it. It is moving so fast. I mean, the book goes from a small upper room in Jerusalem and to the city of Rome and how the gospel spreads throughout the Roman Empire through the preaching of Paul and others, city from city, house to house, person to person. The gospel spreads like a wildfire across the known world. It's one of the phenomena of history how this unknown religion started by a carpenter from Nazareth took over the Roman Empire in about 300 years. It is an amazing thing to contemplate. How did it happen? 
Well, we have some of the stories. Now, mind you, we don't have all the stories. All the gospel writers tell us that there was so much going on and so much was going on so quickly that they literally didn't have time to write it down. I mean, John ends his gospel by telling us if the sky was a scroll and the ocean were ink, I still wouldn't have time or space to write all that Jesus said and did. It's the same way in the local church. Things are happening so fast. People are being saved, converted, coming to Christ by the thousands. And so we have little glimpses of stories, little hints about how things were done. So we have Pentecost. People respond by the thousands. And then we have the house church. We have another great explosion. 5,000 come. And then we have the house church. 2020 is one of those years where the only thing we heard was what we cannot do. We cannot meet in groups of over 10 or over 25 or over 50, and we were never sure of the number. Uh, we can't go out unless we're wearing a mask. You don't have to wear a mask unless you're in this situation. Stay six feet apart unless you're wearing a mask, then you'll be closer. We got so confused about all the things that we couldn't do that a lot of us stopped doing anything at all. I know there's a lot we can't do. We can't gather in our worship the way that we want to. Our choirs can't lead us the way that we love them to. Our musicians cannot play and lead us every Sunday the way we have grown used to worshiping. And we miss that. Every week I hear from you, when are we going to have the choir back? When are we going to have the orchestra back? As fast as we can, I promise you. But instead of focusing on what we can't do, maybe 2021 is one of those years where we simply focus on what we can do. Now, the first thing is relax. We've been here before. Over and over and over again, the world has said to the church, you can't do this. You can't go here. You can't say that. And so the church, if it was cut off from this avenue, would find another way to go. It would find another way to express its worship. It would find another way to do its ministry. It would find another way to make disciples. And we have record of how they did it. How did they do it? Small groups. Jerusalem is overrun by the Babylonian army. The Babylonians had a thing where they would take the best and the brightest back to Babylon. They would train them to be servants of the Babylonian community, the Babylonian government, and then they would send them out throughout the Babylonian empire. Daniel and his friends and countless others were part of those who were taken back to Babylon. We have songs of lament about being cut off from Jerusalem and how do we worship if we can't go to temple? How can we sing the songs of Zion in a strange land? You know how they did it? They did it in small groups. They started forming groups of 10 men who would meet to discuss the Talmud. Had to be at least 10, and they would discuss the Talmud. And this small group, was, which was the beginning of the synagogue, saved the Jewish faith. John Wesley, fearing that the church had drifted away from a basic understanding of relationship with Jesus Christ started the home meeting. That is, brothers and sisters meeting in a home who would talk about the things of the faith. You see, there were circuit riders in the day of John Wesley. You would not have a pastor every Sunday. He would ride around between three or four, sometimes more, churches and preach every Sunday. You may not have preaching on that Sunday. What you would have would be the home groups. And the home groups would ask each other questions. What sins are you dealing with? What is the Lord teaching you? What are you growing in? What gifts do you need to grow in? How have you, well, how have you served the Lord this, this week? And how do we need to serve you? On and on the list goes. But it was that house church where disciples were formed. The church in China, I've told you before, we thought we had lost the church in China. 
when the bamboo curtain fell and we could no longer get missionaries into China, we thought Christianity was over. When we got back into China, not only did we find out that Christianity wasn't over, but Christianity had indeed thrived in the toughest of circumstances. How? Home groups. Small groups meeting in homes. Do you know the pastors, if they got a Bible, would tear the Bible up and tear the pages out? and give one gospel to one pastor, one book to another pastor. So if these pastors were arrested, they wouldn't lose the whole Bible. And yet, the Chinese church thrives. Small groups, it's where it happens. The other thing that happens is that the church is on mission. Sixth chapter of the book of Acts, we find the church ministering to the widows and orphans. Throughout the church story, the the beginning of the church, there are stories of healing, restoration, demons being cast out, all because of the work of the early church. So there are two things really, really prominent that really stand out. And in 2021, here are the two things you're going to hear about. Everybody is in a group. Everybody is on mission. Everybody is in a group. Everybody is on mission. You're in a group for one of two reasons. One, you don't know everything there is to know about Jesus Christ. And because of that, you need to learn. You need somebody who is ahead of you teaching you what they've learned, what they've seen, what they understand. You cannot hold the ocean in a thimble. You're always learning. Second reason You need to teach someone else. You don't have to be the smartest person in your group. You just have to be one or two steps ahead of the person you're trying to help. That's it. Everybody's on the journey. Everybody is somewhere. You're being helped, encouraged, being mentored by someone. You are helping and encouraging and mentoring someone else. Everybody is in a group. It can be a Sunday school class. It can be a home group. It can be a group that meets together to work on widows' homes. I don't care how you get together, but there has to be a small group where you're looking at each other and asking, what are you learning from Jesus this week? What are you struggling with? Have you lied to me? How can we be a help to you? Small enough so if you're not there, you're missed. Small enough that you have a free fire zone where you can talk about what's really going on in your life and you can have brothers and sisters come around you. You have to be in a small group. Christianity is too hard to do by yourself. Life is too hard to do by yourself. You have to have a band of brothers. You have to have a family of sisters. You have to have brothers and sisters around you, family, or you won't make it. Everybody in a group. And if you're not in a group, then get with your church leadership and find a group today. Everybody's on mission. Everybody is called to do something. Now, if you are a member of the family, you have chores. If you're a guest, we don't ask you to do anything. But you know, if you are a member of the family, you have a responsibility. That may be anything from teaching in the preschool, teaching in the children's area, leading a student Bible study. It may mean translating the Bible to a different language, working with the deaf congregation, working with a a people group surrounding your church. There are all kinds of opportunities. But listen, I tell you this all the time. There are things you learn from Jesus only in obedience. It's only in the doing that you learn that Jesus is true, that his word is true, and you can believe it. We believe every member of Brentwood Baptist Church is uniquely gifted and uniquely called. We don't believe there's a one-size-fits-all. We believe that there's something about you that Jesus took particular delight in creating you and in giving to you so you could serve the kingdom and serve your local church. It is vital that you find that place to fulfill all that God has in store for you. 
Everybody is in a group. Everybody is on mission. Oh, let me add one more, every. Every day. Did you see it? That's how the scripture started. Every day they were gathering. Every day this is what they did. Every day they taught. Every day they proclaimed. Every day. Church is no longer limited to Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. Like your life is 24-7. So you find a group that you can be part of. You get involved in that group. You find a mission that God has called you to. Everybody in a group, everybody on a mission every day day. Now, here's how you can get connected at your local congregation. Well, I mentioned just a moment ago that that's a little bit different for us because we are not a consistently simulcasted congregation. And I mentioned that about 12 years ago when we started launching campuses, there are eight regional campuses of Brentwood Baptist Church. That pastor, Mike Glenn, and the trustees of our church, the senior level leadership said, listen, it doesn't need to be built around one person. Should he get sick? Should something happen? We don't want the church family built around one person, but we are one church in multiple locations. And so therefore, everyone is hearing the same text every Sunday. It obviously comes through the different campus pastors differently, but we get to also contextualize the ministry and the mission in the neighborhoods where we're planted. I think we would all agree that 8th Avenue South, Berry Hill, Melrose is different than Brentwood. It's different than Franklin. It's different than East Nashville. There are eight campuses and there are that many expressions of the one vision we have, which is to engage the whole person with the whole gospel of Jesus Christ anywhere, anytime with anybody. And so Mike read from Acts 5:42. He read from Acts 5, 42, and it said, Every day in the temple and in the various homes, they continued teaching and proclaiming the good news that Jesus is the Messiah. Now, he mentioned a couple of different things that we're going to be focused on in 2021. These are not necessarily new things. They are not shocking. They are not such new nuggets of wisdom that any of us probably sat back and said, I've never heard that before. But for the local church, in times of uncertainty and in times where things are a little bit more normal, we need consistency. We need confidence. We need to keep things simple and go back to the basics. And so he mentioned a couple of things that for me, sometimes I hear things and I hold on to them, but it helps me when I not only hear them, but see them and can wrap my mind around them. So I want to put an image up on the screen that for me has been helpful in grasping onto these last several months and praying through what we are after as a church family. You're going to see this diagram in the weeks and months ahead quite a bit. And you're going to notice, we're going to leave this up here for the next several minutes, you're going to notice that it articulates a couple of things that Mike mentioned. The first thing that he mentioned is that we want every member of the church in a group. We want everyone in the church in biblical community. And the reason for that is that none of us reach our kingdom potential on our own. When we come to faith in Jesus Christ, we do not stop there. Many, many Christians in North America have quit growing after they've placed their faith in Jesus Christ. But even in Acts chapter 2, the local church continued growing and thriving and fellowshipping every day. They broke bread together. They learned together. They prayed together. They shared God's Holy Spirit with one another. We want everyone in a group because none of us reach our kingdom potential on our own. And secondly, it's impossible for us to fulfill what Jesus has called us to do as individuals. Jesus said, go and make disciples of all neighbors and all nations. And it's impossible for us to do that as individuals. We are better together on mission than we are as individuals. And we need to be in biblical community. There are three options for how to be in biblical community so that you can flourish and you can hold on to the vision that God's called us to and play your part in that mission. We talk around here about life groups, being in a group of 10 to 12 and sometimes 20 people where we can gather together and study the word and live out the mission of the church. We talk about Bible reading groups, groups of three or four of the same gender, getting together to study the word together once a week to pray together and encourage one another. And then finally, we talk about mentor relationships, 
one-on-one relationships with one another, where we can study the word, where we can pray for one another, and as you heard in the vision sermon, that we can ask one another tough, honest, vulnerable questions in ways where we might not be as honest and open in a room of 10 or 15 or 20. Listen, if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, you need to be in biblical community, and we could offer hundreds of ways to do that and overwhelm and be confused but we've chosen three ways, life groups, Bible reading groups, and mentor relationships. You need to be in one of those venues of growth and flourishing. I'm in a mentor relationship with a friend of mine who goes to the Station Hill campus, which is 30 miles south of here in Spring Hill. We both met at the Brentwood campus nearly 15 years ago, but we have continued as I have come here when we planted this campus, and he is there 30 miles south of us at the Station Hill campus. We have continued to be friends And he has been a mentor to me. He's about 10 years older than I am. He's been walking with Jesus longer than I have. He's been alive longer. He's seen more than I have. And so often when we meet, he will share things with me that I am learning new from him. He is the one who taught me, listen, as your children are growing up, one of the greatest privileges you have is to share with them how you see God at work in their life. Because when they're young and then they're in adolescence, they can't see how God is shaping their faith. So you're there to call that out in them, to affirm them and encourage them in that. And one of the ways I've been reminded of that is he does that for me. I will call him when I'm praying about something and I don't understand what God's up to. Do you have somebody you can call and say, here's what I'm praying about. Here's what I'm burdened about. Here's what I'm overwhelmed about. Have you prayed this? What have you seen God do? What has he taught you in your marriage? Here's what Amy and I are praying and thinking through. Like, do you have that person in your life? I'm in a mentor relationship. Amy and I have been in small groups together. And one of the frustrations over being sick during the month of September is we couldn't participate in the small group that has started that we've joined. But you need to be in a Bible reading group. You need to be in a life group. You need to be in a mentor relationship if you're not because none of us will reach our kingdom potential on our own. And none of us on our own can accomplish what God has called the local church to do. We need one another. So every member in a group, so if you will, on this this flywheel, to me this kind of looks like a propeller of an airplane that would spin and gain momentum. We need everyone to be in a group or biblical community, but we need everyone going on mission. We want every member on mission. One of the things for us corporately as we think about participating with God in the mission that he has for our city Engaging the whole person with the whole gospel, anywhere, anytime, with anybody. One of the things we've noticed as a church over the last several months of COVID-19 is how many of the Metro Nashville public schools obviously have not been meeting in person, and many of the students are dealing with food insecurity, We partner with Carter Lawrence Elementary. That's just the nearest elementary school to us when we opened up five years ago. There are great teachers and educators doing phenomenal work there. But many of you in this congregation, watching online and in this room, you're doing phenomenal work as educators in metro public schools, and we're grateful for you. But the school said to us, there's nearly 90% of these students who are on free and reduced lunch, and while they're not meeting, many of them don't know where the next meal is coming from. And so we put that before the congregation during the summer months, and this congregation donated over 5,000 pounds of food during the months of June and July that we were able to take to those families. Corporately, that's one of the ways we're on mission. And oftentimes when God calls you to do something and you walk through that door, he will open up other doors of opportunity. We've been asked by Carter Lawrence just this past week if we would adopt a middle school, which is right next door, We've also been asked, would we adopt another elementary school that is just about as close to us on the west side of where we are right now to help them not just with food insecurity, but with some of the virtual learning and some of the tablets, and technology, and even in the winter, coats and resources that some of these schools do not have. They call them need bins. We need X. We need Y. Need bins that we can collect, we can donate, we can fill. One of the responsibilities of doing things hopefully well in a God-honoring manner is that the Lord brings you more doors of opportunity to walk through. It feels overwhelming at times to think about adopting not only another school, but a third school. And we're praying through that, what that would look like. But that's one of the ways we're on mission corporately. And God's giving us an opportunity to 
to build relationships with people that we might not ever have a chance to do otherwise. It's just one of the ways we're on mission together. But each and every one of us should identify where God is at work in our neighborhood, in our apartment community, at our school, on our campus, and join him in that work. Everybody on mission. Listen, one of the most important reasons that you need to be in a group is you need to feel the love of Christ when you are isolated or when you are struggling with being reminded you're not alone. I experienced that personally last month as people reached out, as I told you a moment ago, to tell me I'm praying for you. But there are so many people in our congregation that have the gift of hospitality. Listen, the gift of hospitality is just as important as any gift spiritually that would be demonstrated on the platform here at our church. There were literally people who said, what do you need? Somebody texted me, what do you need? And I said, listen, I hate that I am not able to help Amy. I'm not able to do anything. And the kids have to quarantine at home because I'm sick. So if there's any way you can drop something off so Amy doesn't have to cook because she's been holding the family together for seven to ten days, if there's any way. And people showed up and dropped off food. People showed up and dropped off food. Listen, if you hear someone is sick, you can ask them, what can I do for you? But one of the things that you can do is deliver food Write a note of encouragement. You can do that without being asked to let them know. People dropped off soup and Gatorade on our front door to nurse me back to health and to minister to me. The gift of hospitality. That's literally being on mission as an individual. Finding where God is at work and blessing and serving. And we, as I mentioned, are so humbled by that expression of love from this congregation. But you can do that individually. There are other gifts But we do that corporately as well, but we need everyone going on mission. And one of the things that happens as we are in biblical community together and as we're serving and on mission with one another, listen, our lives begin to be changed by having a front row seat to what God is doing. Our lives begin to be changed and transformed from the inside out, and that's the good news of Jesus. It's not window dressing or behavior management. The Holy Spirit transforms our hearts from the inside out. And often people will see that change, they'll see that transformation, and they will be attracted to Jesus who is alive and at work in us. And therefore we have an opportunity not only to demonstrate with the way our lives are being changed what the source of our hope and our confidence is, but we we have an opportunity to tell other people about Jesus. Listen, I'm convinced that if we are on mission together with one another and if we are consistently and faithfully in biblical community, one of the byproducts of that is that people will see Christ being formed in us and we will not be able to keep that truth to ourselves. We will verbally articulate that to others. I mentioned to you before COVID happened and before North America was impacted by that virus, I mentioned at the beginning of the year when we talked about where we were headed in 2020. I did everything I could to make sure to communicate to you. Our staff is so grateful. And we get to watch you serve and minister and bless so many people in so many ways. We do that in deed and action so well. I know the Lord is pleased with that effort from our congregation. But I said, if there's a growth opportunity, if there's a growth edge for us, it's verbally sharing the good news of Jesus. Because Paul's letter to the church in Rome says that faith comes from hearing the gospel. We need to verbally articulate the gospel. And I know some of us may feel more comfortable than others. You may think, well, you're a preacher, and and that may come naturally to you, but it doesn't come naturally to me. This is one of the things we can do when we're out walking. We're going to Radnor Lake. We're socially distancing, and we wave, and we talk, or we're visiting with a neighbor or a friend with the appropriate protocols in place. We can still do that. Just, Just a couple months ago, I was talking with the pest control man, I was talking with a pest control man, and somehow, some way, it came up what I did for a living, that I'm a pastor. And we began talking about that. And I said, do you go to church? And he said, I don't go to church, but my wife was raised in church, so she goes to church. But we have a small child, and so, I, I mean, I think at some point it would be helpful for, for that, you know, our, our child to be in church, probably. And I said, well, what is it about being in church that you want your child to receive or understand? And in the middle of the conversation, I'm like, Lord, do I just go for it? He may think I'm a nut, but let's just do this. And I said, one of the most beautiful things about your intent and desire for your child is that God created your child to know him and to be in relationship with him. And you might have the privilege of introducing your son to the God who made and created him. And I'm hoping he won't look at me like I'm a freak. (laughs) Because we don't really know each other and we don't have a relationship with one another. 
But I shared the gospel with him, and I said, but in order for you to be able to share the gospel with your son so he can hold on to it, you need to know who Jesus is. Do you have a relationship with Jesus Christ? Listen, gospel conversations start to come out of us. We think about that as the Lord is transforming and shaping our hearts when we're on mission together and when we're in biblical community with one another. Do this this week. Actually anticipate that you're going to have a gospel conversation. I want you to actually anticipate that you're going to have a gospel conversation this week. When we don't think we are, we don't have them because we don't look for those opportunities. But I want you to anticipate over the next six days sharing the good news of Jesus with someone that you come in contact with. These are the things that we want to be about as a church. Every member in a group, every member going and participating on mission and a byproduct of that is that we will be sharing and articulating the gospel of Jesus Christ. And before March and COVID, we reworked everything we do as a church to work smarter, not necessarily harder, and to do gospel conversation training and equipping in our membership classes and our mission journey classes. And we've had over 60 people in our congregation go through gospel conversation training this year. And recently, Hunter, Matthew, and myself recorded training so that we can make that available to you and we'll be pushing it out later this month because one of the things we can be doing is being equipped with the gospel so that we can share the good news of Jesus with others. We can do that no matter what year, no matter what circumstances. So you're going to be hearing a lot about groups, you're going to hear a lot about going, and you're going to hear a lot about gospel conversations. That's what we're about as a church. That's what we'll be focusing on in 2021 here as a campus, and I'm excited. Listen, Within the past couple of weeks, there have been people of different ages baptized in our church congregation. Many of you have seen those stories because people are coming to faith in Christ and they are professing their belief in him. God is up to something in our church family. And we want to be right in the middle of what he's doing. So one of the things I want us to do this morning is I want us to pray and consider what God's calling us to do as our next step of participating in the life of this church. Let me encourage you to bow your head and close your eyes for just a moment. The the musicians are going to be coming to the platform. And I want you to consider if you're not in a group, if you're not in a mentor relationship, if you're not in a Bible reading group, if you're not in a small group, I want you to pray and ask the Lord to give you the courage, to give you the boldness, to give you the desire to step out in faith and to get connected to others. It's so important. I've lived it. I've experienced it recently. It's palpable to me. I want you to experience the love of Christ through community with others. If you're not on mission, if you're not serving, listen, there's going to be plenty of opportunities in the coming weeks for us to collect and donate food and resources. Be plenty of opportunities for you to drop it off, contact free, socially distant, appropriate. We're going to be very intentional about that, but there's going to be ways for you to participate in the corporate mission of the church. But if you don't have an understanding of what your gifts are and what God's called you to do, begin praying today Lord, what is my personal mission? What are you calling me to do as an individual to advance the gospel? And finally, this morning, I want you to begin praying for opportunities to verbally share the good news of Jesus with others. Begin praying and say, Lord, give me opportunities. If this is the best thing that anyone could ever hear, Lord, please open up a door for me to share this week. Let me give you about 60 seconds to pray about what God would have you do or a next step he would have you take. Those are just three. He may be stirring in your heart in a different way. Let me give you 60 seconds, just you and the Lord, to pray about that. And then Ronnie will ask us to stand and sing in response.
guys stand with us and we'll sing these words out. All to Jesus. All to Jesus I surrender all. To Him I freely give. I will ever love and trust in His presence Listen, before you leave this morning, if you're not in community with others, and Mitch, I think we've seen quite a bit of connection and mental relationships this past month. Listen, if if groups or that's just not what you're comfortable with, get in a mental relationship. See Mitch Simpson, see one of us on staff. If you're not in biblical community, don't rob yourself of being encouraged and lifted up and prayed for by others. So if that's what you need to do today, do that. If you're not on mission you're interested, like we're, we're going to be collecting food this week. Matthew Page, our missions minister, will send out information about that in his weekly updates. We're going to be collecting food that we can drop off if you're not participating and you want to join in on that. Or you're not sure how to find your own spiritual gifts. If it's not hospitality or teaching or leadership, it may be something else. Reach out to the church staff. See me. We have coaches who will help you discern what God has gifted you to do. So so don't leave here without making that connection today. And at a minimum, if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, pray today and say, Lord, give me an opportunity this week to share the good news of Jesus with somebody else and actually anticipate that he'll do that. I know that's a prayer that he would want to honor. Hey, listen, I'm very excited to share with you that next Sunday will be a big Sunday for us. We have been at one worship service for several months since we have reopened. Next Sunday, we will be beginning and launching a second service at 11 a.m. We'll be doing that so that we can continue to be socially and appropriately distant, but yet engage more people who want to worship with us. Also part of that, at 9 a.m., we will be offering worship care for children that are birthed through four years old. It's the first time in about seven and a half months that we will have opportunities for the next generation on Sunday morning. Birth through four years old, we will have the Grove here in our church open for parents to be able to check their children in. There will be protocols. We'll be pushing that out this week. Alex Rose will do that. We will be asking families and parents to let us know if you plan to participate in that, but that'll be happening at 9. So we may see more families. We may see more parents at 9. Therefore, we want to offer a second service, not only for spacing, but to accommodate attendance at 11. So we're excited about that. Listen, if you don't track with us on social, if you're not getting our emails, We want you to make sure you're connected with us so you have all that information. God is up to something good, and we want to be exactly in the middle of that. So listen, let me pray for us, 
this morning. I'm going to pray for us, and this is how we will dismiss. If you're watching at home, reach out to us. If there's anything we can help you with, taking a next step. If you're here in this room, let us know or email us. We would love to serve and equip you this morning. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, thank you for what you're doing in the life of this church. There are children and adults who are following you in salvation and baptism. There are women and men who are discerning what you've called them to do with their lives, and they're receiving great joy in that, and we give you praise. Lord, this church belongs to you, and we ask that you would help us to be focused on the basics so that each of us can flourish, and together we can reach this community with the gospel of Jesus Christ so lives can be changed. Give us the courage and the boldness to respond as you lead us this morning, and we pray all of this in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, amen. 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 We hope you have a great Sunday afternoon, and we look forward to seeing you at 9 or 11 next Sunday. Have a great week.